Hello, welcome to Transformation and Transcendence Roundtable Podcast. I'm Franklin Sowers, your host. Um, I'm going to start alone here today. I think Joshua will come in later. Uh, the others are away on vacation and doing other things. Uh, so uh, if you're if you like what you're hearing or going to hear, have heard, uh, you can uh, you know subscribe, like. Uh, share the podcast. <clears throat> we talk about uh, spirituality, psychotherapy, and, uh, you know, try to unsettle the dichotomy between spirituality and psychology and psychological psychological growth. You know, that uh, instead of waiting for uh, God or life to, you know, uh, if you're obedient and you follow rules to uh, allow you something or give you something or grant you something because you're, you know, you're following the rules or you're going to uh, whatever it is, whatever kind of service and just in expecting that it's going to come if you're obedient. This approach really is more in line with the idea that we have to be active, that if uh, if we want to have a better life, uh, we have to improve ourselves. We have to grow. Now, it's often aligned with God's will uh, or the spiritual kind of spark that's within us. Uh, the approach is mostly and often that uh, God dwells within us, the kingdom of heaven is within us, and that our problems also are within us, and that when we work on ourselves and our faults and our when we're, we miss the mark and when we are in some ways against life or against others that we don't know about that we can improve ourselves and walk the spiritual path the steep and narrow path to more realization fulfillment emotional growth uh, and peace peace in our life and peace for others including joy uh, happiness and a sense of uh, zest for life so so that's that's what we're doing here so uh, today I'd like to talk a little bit about needs, uh, real needs, false needs. Uh, this comes uh, a bit from Henry Murray's work. Uh, he's a psychoanalyst. He was. He's passed away now. Uh, I worked with uh, psychogenic needs, a little bit from humanistic psychology, uh, such as um, uh, Maslow in his work with hierarchy of needs. Uh, also the path work of self-transformation, lecture 92, repressed needs, relinquishing blind needs. You can find the path work lectures online, path work uh, lectures. That's what you type in if you want to get to those. Uh, and also my book uh, called um, Love Outraged and the Liberation of the Core Self. Love outraged. Uh, the idea behind love outrage is that the longing for love, when uh, kids, you know, feel it and they get injured through neglect or criticism or abandonment or uh, institutional kinds of uh, ideas that these, uh, you know, the longing for love somehow should be repressed and people should be stern or good soldiers and that kind of thing. Any of that kind of material. Uh, you know, that causes the love to be outraged, the longing for love to be hurt, and then outraged. And what does that mean? That means that when little kids or children, toddlers, even all the way up, feel rejected in their longing for love or neglected, uh, wounded, that they don't just go, oh, I'm sad. Isn't that sad? I, you know, I'm not being loved. I, my parents aren't here. They, they can't come out of their depression or whatever, you know, they can't come, they drink, they drink a lot, and I, I don't feel they love me, so I'm sad. Well, they, they do get sad and all that, but it, that isn't all that they feel. They also, the wound calls anger, see, anger, outrage. This is the, even in, um, you know, uh, the idea of the grief process, you know, there's, there's a lot of it is anger that there's outrage at the idea at some point in the grief process that this is happening to us. Well, little kids feel that in spades, um, that, you know, and, uh, but 
they often feel that if I act out my anger, if I express it, I'm going to get less of what is available, less crumbs than I've already am already getting from my parents or my people in my life, my caring figures, brothers and sisters, and all that. So um, they uh, repress it, and they try to be good kids, and they go on and. Uh, and they kind of hide their repressed anger, which is the love outrage. Now, what does that do? It causes a sense of, um, you know, uh, it's low self-esteem that they carry around this anger and this frustration and this kind of demand that the life make up for what they've missed so far. And also, it creates a mask, really. What is a mask or an idea of myself? It's the idea if I'm just perfect enough, and if I just were really great, and I just behaved well, uh, I would be, you know, valued. If, I, if I'm perfect enough and I get good grades in school, maybe they'll think I'm special and like me. All these kinds of displaced ideas, needs, really. Needs is what we were talking about, displaced needs, to achieve and uh, not that achievement can't be good, but when it's a displaced need based on a hurt and anger for what we missed, it creates this compulsiveness and urgency and forcing and anxiety And when it's not achieved. So it creates a lot of, uh, a lot of anxiety, even depression, when we fail to meet this uh, these idea, these goals of, uh, you know, being perfect, being special, achieving, etc. You know, creates false needs too, which are like the needs to be better than the next person, the need to triumph over the next person, the need for glory. If I'm only at this big glorious thing, people will finally think I'm special. Glory, which also provokes envy. It isn't like typically in service of glory. Uh, glory. You know, if you're in service of people and you get some good stuff out of that, well, that's good, but that's not what usually happens. It's usually this compulsion to be very special and still garner what you missed, you know. In, in psychology, we often call this uh, a narcissistic wound that happens. What does that mean? Uh, it's a big word. It means that, you know, when, when you're little and you, your longing for love is injured and you, you seek um, a substitute ways to get it, and you're not aware of the need still because you felt you want to repress it, uh, it doesn't really go away. It just gets distorted and substituted. And sometimes it even the, the reaction, the anger, uh, makes you um, short with people and creates, creates other trouble. You know, you, you feel you get demanding that you get love first to feel safe. Uh, you push. Uh, sometimes you criticize others as a displacement because you feel like if you put them down, and they're going to think you're special and you're going to make up for this wound that you have, right? But it doesn't work that way because when people feel criticized or rejected in, in, in your attempt to uh, feel really special yourself and then make up for what you've lost, you, um, you create problems for yourself in your life. So let me review some healthy needs, and then let's review some false needs, you might say, and then and then some fates of the of these healthy needs. Are the, some need to be loved, right? Especially when you're little, you need you need that quite a bit. Uh, but as we grow older, you know, we have to both uh, develop a need for love. I mean, expressing it, but also uh, to give love, right? That you you understand that you have to give as much as you're going to get. And at some point, you may even understand that as you grow into adulthood and really uh, become a leader or something in your life, that to be able to give love to other people becomes even more ascendant than your need to always get love. Because uh, it's just you, you feel like this is um, I don't know, something you've achieved, this place where uh, to give is really, is really a wonderful way of feeling good about yourself and helping other people being of service uh, other needs are you know some esteem um, industry where you feel like you can have a job you can support yourself the ability to take care of yourself uh, work-life balance 
um, sexual needs, romantic needs, or can be honest and, and good, right? Those are part of our life. Uh, you know, the need to um, have some achievement, but not not the need to triumph over other people with it, you see, or pit your egoistic kind of needs against theirs, or win out all the time, that kind of thing. This is what we call a false need. Uh, the need for perfection is a false need. You know, not, if you want to be really good at something or even excellent at something, that's different than having to be perfect at it, you know? Um, the need for glory, as we talked about, the need for, um, uh, you know, triumphing others. So that's a, that those, these are false needs. The need to always be special. The need for everybody to like you all the time. These are false needs and actually kind of destructive needs. Real needs, like the need to be loved, the need to, you know, be, have romantic feelings, the need to care about other people, to give over, give over and to give up yourself to life and other people. If those are repressed, those can become a problem too because the urgency of repressed needs that you're not aware of become really, really strong. And it creates what we call a forcing current, you know? So if you don't know that you have a strong need to be loved or even a basically good need to be loved or liked or valued uh, and the need to give love, you don't know these things, uh, they can often create, uh, you know, this forcing, this pushing and the demand, right? And then also the blindness to your needs can make it so that you, not recognizing them, you can't relinquish them. You can't tell yourself, hey, it's not going to kill me if this person doesn't love me or this person doesn't like me or this person doesn't esteem me. Yeah, it's not going to kill me. And then, you know, and also, uh, uh, you know, then you have to, if, if, if you're not aware of your needs and you displace them or you have to prove yourself all the time to people. You're always trying to prove yourself, prove how good you are, prove that you're, you know, more special and better and well. and so the you know this forcing to prove yourself becomes a problem and but anyway if you suppress or repress your needs and you don't know that you have you, first of all that you're going blind you're flying blind in life in many ways if you think you don't need to be loved that's a problem but on the other hand if you have this urgency and this forcing and this demand and everything is a tragedy if it doesn't come your way, including getting the love you want, the liking you want, the esteeming you want, that's a that's a problem as well. Because for things to be successful, for your needs to be really have a fair chance of them being gratified, if if you're pushing people and demanding people to gratify them, you're gonna force them away. So you're gonna force them away, your your demands. Your over, your over neediness, even your, um, how could I say, subjugate, ingratiating yourself, sub, subjugating yourself, uh, being, you know, kind of a, a doormat to get people to love you. Now, that really hurts your self-esteem if people take that track, which is an, another track people take. I'll just be the most loving and, and uh, let people always win and I'll take second place and you lose your sense of, um, you know, healthy fighting spirit, healthy, I can take life on and I deserve an equal place just like the next person does. I deserve whatever, you know, uh, to have uh, my needs gratified as much as theirs too. And so you don't, you know, it's, you don't have to triumph over others, but if you use ingratiation to get your needs met, you have all kinds of negative kind of fallout from that. And the big deal is, the biggest thing to talk about is, first of all, being aware of these needs and the false needs. But secondly, is to be able to, as you're aware of them, is to renounce them. Is to say, you know, I'm not. it's not going to kill me if this person doesn't think I'm special or I don't get that thing or I, I don't get that success or I don't win here. I don't win every moment. I don't have to always beat everybody in the argument or be first or be better. Uh, you know, out talk them, uh, this kind of stuff. I don't always have to do that. If you can renounce that at times, you know, win at times, if if it's, you know, you don't want to, all, don't want to always lose. But if you, you measure the moment by the truth of the moment, what's important? And if you can renounce things, uh, your needs, 
you're in, you can be in pretty good shape. What does that mean? You don't have to be say I'm not going to ever be loved, but you don't have to have it at this moment. So you don't never you don't have to say you're never going to win an argument, but you don't have to win all of them, and you don't have to win this one at the moment. Maybe right? Only if it's really important that you win for the sake of somebody's safety or health or something, then you might want to pursue it. But if it's for your ego needs to van you know uh, you know gratify your vanity, you need to let it go. Right? So. Being aware of needs, both real and false, allows us to say, I can let go. I don't have to have that. So these are all very important things. That's a lot. I'm saying a lot here in a short period of time. But I guess I'm pitching, coaching people to become aware of these needs in themselves, both real, healthy needs for esteem, love, valuing, romance, uh, job, work, work life, um, industry, uh, independence, solitude, uh, closeness, warmth all these things that are healthy and also the vain glory needs you know all to be triumphed and all that stuff be aware of them all the false needs don't really have to be gratified at all but the real ones do and again you don't have to force the false needs away you just need to recognize them and say yeah, maybe at this moment i don't have to have that yeah don't have to beat yourself up because you don't get it or you still have these needs because they're pretty human to have these needs for um these narcissistic needs, you might say, you know. So um, anyway, and Joshua Morrow is here. He's been here for about 10 minutes, I think, listening to me talk. Uh, so uh, hi, Josh. How are you doing? Doing good. Good. Yeah. Good. So what do you think about this kind of thesis I'm putting forward? And I, I did cite that this is some Maslow, this is some... Henry Murray, the psychoanalyst who talked about psychogenic needs. It's also in the book, Love Outrage, my book, Love Outrage and the Liberation of the Core Self. And finally, uh, the Pathwork of Self-Transformation, Lecture 92, talks about this directly. That's Eva Paracas's work, Eva Paracas. I won't even try to spell it. <laughs> Just look up the Pathwork lectures, yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, uh, that's background. So I think you missed that part about where. It, it, uh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 I think I just a little late. Um, yeah, needs are super important. Um, a lot of thoughts sort of sifting through my head. Um, I think that the repressed needs element is really important. That we have to have an awareness of what we need. Uh, different people need different things. And so, in relationships, I, I don't remember who I was listening to or reading, but they were sort of talking about how like that's sort of what a relationship is with other people is that you know you're giving but you're also receiving there's like this like there's this uh, reciprocal nature to it and if you don't feel like you have any needs that's going to create imbalances in your relationship um if you have too many needs, like the neediness that you said, um, and if you don't understand what other people need, then that's going to be a big problem too. Like if you're so focused on your own needs that you're unable to listen for other people's needs, causes huge amounts of problems. Like parents who are still caught in their own uh, unmet needs from their childhood are going to have a difficult time being present for their kids' needs. And, and so being aware of what needs you have and then being aware, and then through that, being aware of what other people need uh, is it's just, I think it's foundational for relationships that is I don't think is I don't know exactly how other people think about relationships these days because 
I'm weird and I don't think I'm normal in the way that I think about things or <laughs> feel about things, you know? <laughs> but um, <clears throat> it doesn't seem apparent to me that people are sort of have that on the forefront of their mind. Uh, and yeah, and it leads to all sorts of like, I, there's this guy, uh, Tim Fletcher, I think is his name, very prolific guy. Um, but he talks about how there's 12, he has like, there's 12 foundational needs. And he describes that if there's unmet needs in childhood, it can create what he calls a hyper need in adulthood. And one of the things of the hyper need is that it can never be satisfied. It's that that person is always hungry for that. Like if it's approval, they never got approval as a kid. And then you can adapt to it, let's say, in three ways. One healthy, where you figure it out. One, where you say, I don't need other people's approval at all. Or you, you I always need. Yeah. 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 Or it's I always need everyone's approval all of the time. Yeah. And this and, is. It's unconscious, right? I mean, it's, it's what I we're talking about. If you're not aware of it, it wreaks havoc on your life, right? Yeah. 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 And all sorts of, like, secondary emotions can arise from it because if, like, you have feeling that you need to have approval all the time and you do something that doesn't get approval with the person, now you're feeling all guilty and all terrible. And it's like, oh, what's wrong with me? Or like, you know, uh, all sorts of emotions can arise out of that. Or you get mad and, at the other person and say, what's the matter with you for not meeting my needs, right? <laughs> you want, see, true, all of us true. has got to be really messed up. It's in it, you know, it's going to be you <laughs> and me. I mean, I'd rather it be you, right? You know, you're a bad person. You don't meet my needs, right? <laughs> so I think you froze up a little bit there, but uh maybe you'll come back in a sec. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll just keep talking and walk so that we don't have a lot of dead air, but I think you're froze there, Joshua. But anyway, that's another fate, right? If um it's either somebody's somebody's doing something wrong, either me, something's wrong with me, or something's wrong with them. And then we often use other kinds of externalizations and blames, you know, punishment, criticism, uh, you know, spite, uh, withdrawal, stonewalling, these kinds of things to try to get our way. Or a, a different tact would be, you know, to be ingratiating, right? And we're obsequious. We we try, you know, we, we kind of grovel and that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, that's really that's really kind of. Um, another self-defeating behavior and even the other people around us in the end i mean they might take advantage of you for the moment or whatever but they they typically don't find that very attractive in the other person you know unless they want to use them but they don't find that as attractive in the sense of being a person who really is uh, taking care of themselves is equal is uh, willing to you know deal with life that kind of thing they don't have they don't grant them that kind of uh, valuation because uh, they're not doing it right. They're being more childlike in their uh, expression of their needs, and they need to kind of grovel uh, and put them make themselves a doormat instead of being an equal partner in the conversation, the relationship, uh, life, that kind of thing. So we lost Josh, uh, Joshua. I think he'll be back, but otherwise I'll just carry on for a while. So uh, this Jim Fletcher, I think I have to read his his work. I, I think it's a book, he said. Sounds a bit like what I'm talking about, uh, 12 Basic Needs. So, um, so yeah. So, okay. So what's really important is, is to try to become aware of all these needs. You know, a need for caring and to be cared for and that kind of thing it's all different than the vanity needs you know the idealized self needs where you try to be more than the next person win out you know that kind of thing rather than the relational 
kind of need, you know, um, where you're equal and you give and you take and you negotiate um, needs being met, you know, that kind of thing. Are you there, Joshua? Hey. Hey, hey. Sorry hey. about that. That's Technical right. difficulties. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the phone overheated. It's a really nice day out, but I guess it's my downfall right now. Yeah, maybe you um, had it in the sun too long, huh? Out of what? Maybe you had the phone in the sun or something. Yes, yes. It's the windshield that's amplifying it too. Yeah. A, uh, a book. I'm not in yeah. office. Oh, oh, there goes the windshield. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. So where did you go after that? Sorry, I, I didn't mean to. Leave. Well, I I think I um I just talked about uh, I said I think I need to read this book by Jim Fletcher. It sounds like some of the stuff I'm talking about. I haven't read his work, uh, and I, I was talking about how important it is to uh, become you know to be aware of your needs. It's really kind of the foundation of what we're talking about. If you're aware of them, you can negotiate them. You can renounce them. You can let them go. You don't have to let them go forever, but I say, I don't have to do it now. I don't have to have it now. This person doesn't have to like me. This person doesn't have to think I'm special, right? I don't need the, I don't need the, the triumph here. I don't need the win here. I, I, maybe I need to give love here instead of get it. Or I think about the other person. What does the other person need? Realize there's other, another person in the room that has needs too. And I guess where I was going too is that um, you can't really – be aware of that other people have needs and what they are very well if you don't know your own. Yeah? Just like, yes. feelings, just like feelings. If you don't know your own feelings, it's hard to understand that somebody else is in pain or they're upset or they, you know, they need something or they're frightened or they're worried. You know, uh, they want something important for them. Uh, they need empathy. They need care, whatever it might be. It's, if you don't know your own, you know, it's hard to, hard to understand. Exactly, exactly. And so this this draws two directions for me. One being, um, it's also hard if the other person won't admit needs or share their needs with you if they're a different type of person. So it's like I've had relationships where it's hard for me to understand the person because I'm different than them, and but they're not willing to relationship because they're not willing to accept that I have my needs or that they're they have their needs they're not willing to share theirs um, and typically if the narcissist some kind of person who's narcissistic and they just want to take from you and they then and get away with it and then run to the next relationship yeah. so that's that does happen at times um, because there's this there's this difference. This podcaster guy was talking about covert contracts and overt contracts. Right. And so overt, you're like talking about these agreements and these like business needs, relationship needs, uh, responsibilities, whatever it might be, and you're agreeing to them openly and directly but then there's covert contracts where people are making a deal so that they get something else out of it maybe. but they don't and talk so, about it. it's under the table so to speak right exactly yeah exactly <clears throat> and so that that was one direction that my mind went with that the other was um oh gosh it slipped my mind um that well i can come in and let you give you a chance to please think. please yeah. i probably won't well, remember I, i'm talking i'm thinking about how important communication is see, both with yourself and with the other person and honest communication you know if you if you're not honest with yourself about what you need and what you want and what you like and what you desire and how intensely you want it you don't do this kind of kind of self-examination once in a while and take a look. It's hard to be uh, able to communicate what you want and need, you know. And it's hard to understand what other people do and even recognize it, give it validity. 
So uh, communication between one another about these, these needs, which you they need to, it needs to be more overt, right? Uh, as you're saying, if it's covert, which means it's kind of under the table, you may be expecting something. You may be offering somebody something and really expecting they're going to give somebody something to you back. Well, sometimes that's a that's a trap, you know. Like I did this for you and that for you, and, and now I want you to whatever go out with me, or I want you to help me do this, or I want you to uh, be uh, you owe me, like you owe me, you know, time to listen and talk tomorrow we'll do this there's sort of hidden demands with covert kind of contracts because you can't be honest and straightforward with them for these are just some examples so you want to be honest and, and open as best you can right and this this helps um helps relationships thrive and as you know yourself it helps you say i want this or i can renounce it and it doesn't kill me if i don't get it i like to have it Things don't have to get so urgent that you feel so desperate all the time because you realize there's another day. If you're aware of your needs, there's other ways to get some of this stuff met. You know, uh, that kind of thing. It's not the only job. It's not the only workstation. It's not the only, uh, it's not the only whatever um, paper I can write. It's not the only woman I can talk to, man I can relate to. Uh, you know, it, it, everything is not so one-pointed and urgent you know now if it is you need to you need to take a look at that how come what's the, what's the desperation about why do i feel you know my value and my worth and my okayness can only come from the gratification of this particular need at this time we need to have i think a deeper resonant well of kind of well-being in this so we don't get stuck with you know this desperate kind of having to have uh, this need met. Somebody love me. Somebody value me. Somebody esteem me. Somebody be with me all the time. Whatever you know, it, I can, it can, I can, I can do without for a while. It's frustrating. It's another and major portion of frustration tolerance, which we talked about. And you can't be resilient and manage life very well if you don't have frustration tolerance, because you're always pissed off and always irritable and always, you know, annoyed <laughs> if you don't have it right. And then you're kind of like a prickly pear half the time, yeah? Yeah. And I, and I think that this traces to, um, like, those unmet needs where, like, there's, you know, I do the parts work stuff. And so there's, like, like, in my own life, I can be fine. I'm totally fine with my life as it is, but then something will happen which will activate a part of me and then I'll just be in a funk for a time. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I don't need anyone to re-regulate at this point. Well, I, I don't know if I ever did, but uh, I know how to regulate myself. It takes time and you just got to go through that process. Um, but like there's, there's conditioning things that go on with it too. It's like, like if you have two people that are making these let's say covert contracts then they come into relationship with each other they meet each other and they're like oh i know how to play this game you're doing covert i'm doing covert we'll both do it together <laughs> <laughs> but then if you throw an overt person into the mix that covert person is like oh i don't like this person uh -huh. you know and maybe because so. they're not huh i said maybe so yeah it's just they're not playing the same game. Yeah. Same thing with the needs. If you have someone who really needs approval and another person who really needs approval, they get together and they just give it to each other. And they're like, oh, this feels so good, you know? <laughs> but then if you have a person who doesn't really need approval that strongly and you encounter and that person who does like approval a lot come together, it, they're going to be confused because their their orientations are totally different about what they're seeing in the world, what they want to get from life. And um, so this is where I think like how the social atmosphere is shaped right now um, and how people are developing like the, the, their, the developmental progression of their psychology and stuff is really important. But um, so, uh, gosh, I'm a little bit scattered today, it seems. 
um, well, try to trace gonna, back, and I can't. I, I was going to add in, you know, sometimes if you both have this strong need for approval and you're not aware of it or, you know, if it's covert, sometimes they end up fighting with each other. You know, you you, you fight for the floor, and I, <laughs> and I want to, you know, I'm, ah. I'm gonna, you see, that? so it isn't always harmonious when it's covert and you have the same need. Sometimes because it's a battle of who gets their needs met sometimes, right? Yeah. Interesting. Where if okay. it's over, you can say, well, how about my turn? <laughs> right? That's yes. Something, yes. Something, I'm simplifying. But basically, how about my turn? You know what? Uh, can I, can, how about, how about I, let me talk about this too or something like that. It's maybe more related, yeah. you know, in the moment. But otherwise, sometimes you do, you do get in fact. And sometimes it's uh, ego needs to get in there. Like I, I want you to think I'm special, and I want you to think I'm more special. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna win this point or win this argument. If I know more than you, then you think I'm special, and then that's another battle. Rather than saying, yeah, I don't need those kind of needs, right? You know, if you, if you got a point, I'll listen to it. I don't have to triumph over yours, and you know, if you want to triumph over mine, I, I, I don't, I don't have to play the game. Okay, you know, okay, uh, but, but I'll let it go, right? You know. That's yeah, the, and so this goes, this goes to that wound that. Mm -hmm. the the idea that we have these wounds and these parts that get activated that well well this part of this person is, gets activated let's say and then has to dominate over the other person like they feel like this sort of like this compulsion to do that like the in even in a sense they might not even be aware of it right. that this is just like this repeatedly ingrained pattern in their internal system right and and so this is why honest feedback, I love it. Uh, you know, if you get people who are like, hey, I see you're doing this thing, you know, and then they can see like, oh my gosh, I am doing it. Or they might get extra mad and be like, ah, rah, 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 rah. Yeah, you're so, doing it. Or you can even just recognize the person's doing it. You can, you can meet that need a little bit if you're aware of yourself. And then you say, well, you know, I, I have something to say too. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Right? In so many words, right? Is it, you know, I, I have, I have, did you, did you hear about this movie, you know, or did you hear about, did you read that book? Or, and it's good, just like your book is good, whatever you're talking, you know, whatever you're, you're conversing about. Or, you know, uh, I'd like you to go with me uh, to dinner or something because, uh, you know, it's really important. I, I'm happy to go with you to do that, but can you do this with me? And sometimes you, know, you can speak it out. Right. Otherwise, you, you know, you get spiteful. Well, I did that for you. Why aren't you doing it for me? And you hold your case, especially if you hold your case rather than talking about it. Right? You get contemptuous, spiteful, you know, uh, morose. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What's the matter? They say, "What's the matter?" I'm <laughs> fine. I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 You've been there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and so like I'm, I'm I guess it's this is where like I I feel like needs go along with these wounds because in adulthood I think like if you've been able to mature enough to a point where you can meet most of your own needs you know you don't need other people to do you know you're, you're pretty competent you're capable you can handle yourself in life um and so the needs go at that point goes hand in hand with these wounds because once something happens it activates an old wound that is this repressed need or this unconscious need or this that was previously unaddressed and if you're able to share that with people but the trouble is you have to have safe relationships to do that i think that's why the therapy and life coaching is so important because that's a safe relationship yeah. you know that's why we get paid because we get paid to give people safe relationships well, you know yeah 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 in part you know that's not all of it but right among other things that's right that's right. Yeah. And, and sometimes you need to process a wound, to grieve it, or you know, and understand your urgency that accrues from it, that comes develops out of it. You know, you, now you've got to have everybody make up for your lack of approval, which that's the rest of people are disaster. 
I think if you know you have this strong need for approval, you need to begin to say, I don't have to have it all the time. It's not going to kill me. Some approvals, okay, it's good. But if I go around through life feeling everybody's got to fill that hole up, it's a it's a problem. So I have to be let it go. And there is an assumption, an unconscious assumption, was that if I don't get it, I'm going to die. Something like that. It just feels like I'm going to die. You're not going to die. You see. But you have to you have to begin to challenge those kinds of beliefs, right? And coaches uh, can, and therapists can point those out, right? You know, this is what's happening. You know, you think you're going to die if they, you don't get that approval. On you just be, let them breathe. Lean into it and say to yourself, I'm going to survive this. Yes. <laughs> and I, right? You know? Yeah. I, I'll live through this moment and I'll be better for it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And I tend to, when I tend to direct people, because I mostly work with individuals that like, Uh, how can you meet that need as much as you can yourself? Like if you need approval, how can you learn to approve of yourself? And that way, you don't need to rely on other people yeah, well, for approval, point, being yeah. approving of you. Because, yeah, because yeah, you, you, you can just, you can give that to yourself. It's like that self-love concept, which is yeah. very elusive. It's like... Um, if you can love yourself, then you're just going to be less needy of it from others. Yeah, value yourself, uh, honor yourself, and you know, esteem yourself. And sometimes, you know, work on your esteem by, you know, what, uh, how much love you're able to give as well. Because sometimes the need to give love gets all displaced into getting love, and then that gets displaced into getting approval. Approval and being loved are not the same thing. But they're similar. Yes. But uh, you can get sidetracked there, and you think they're the same. If somebody really honestly loves you, sometimes you don't even need all that approval all the time, spoken, you know, demonstrate. Because you have a sense just sitting with them. They do. It's okay. And if you, they feel that from you, less words have to be done. I mean, not, you can enjoy what you're conversing about, but the desperation and all, all that starts to simmer down, right? Because you, you care about yourself, you care about the other person in a deep way, which is kind of love. And then the other needs are just kind of calm down. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what we talked about, too, is the pl displaced needs, right? The longing for love can be displaced into perfectionism, a false need, and, 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 and triumphing over others, which is a false need, and having, having to have all the ego gratification, which is another false need. So, you know, defeating other people and all that kind of stuff. That's that's you want to know your needs and their displacement. Right? So that that helps you let go of all that stuff, which then you feel better about yourself. Stop that vicious cycle. For sure. Yeah. Well, it looks like we better stop. Uh, thanks for coming on, uh, Joshua. Totally, my pleasure. Yeah, we'll see you next week, eh? Yep. All okay. right. Take care. See ya. All right. Bye-bye.